Hello and welcome to Crisis and Glam. This is a panel discussion and workshop that uh, considers our, as Wikimedians possibilities of using our tools and skills to make a positive impact in today's crisis. We'll learn from uh, the experiences of uh, three Wikimedians. Eder Porto uh, from Wikimovimento Brazil introduces the digital reconstruction work they undertook when a massive fire devastated the building and collections of the National Museum of Brazil in 2018. Nasima Shabun from Wiki World Heritage uh, walks us through the work of, of Wind Danger that promotes and raises awareness of UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Danger using participatory creative tactics and Wikimedia projects. And finally, Hanna Osadchuk from Wikimedia Ukraine talks about open access to cultural heritage as seen from within the ongo ongoing war. I am Susanna Ones from Avoinglam, Finland, uh, together with uh, Patricia Diaz Rubio uh, from Wikimedia Chile. We will be we will be moderating this uh, discussion. Linda Saukorauta uh, records the ideas and discussions by drawing, and the result will be shared openly after the event. So over to Patricia. Thank you, Susanna, and thank you all of you for uh, participating, for creating this opportunity uh, to have such a diverse panel where we expect to learn from territories that seem so different, right? Uh, like Finland, Brazil, Ukraine, Morocco and the Middle East and Chile, of course. Uh, just to situate um, a little personal experience, um, before joining the Wikimedia movement, movement um, in 2018, I was very involved in disaster studies, uh, in particular in the study of the narratives and memory construction around uh, disasters like earthquakes that uh, happen so often in my country. And since, since I started working uh, with Wikimedia Chile, I have wondered how to conjoin these two topics. And I'm really looking forward to learning more about your different experiences as Wikimedias, uh, Wikimedians facing different types of crises, from disasters to war to conflicts, and hopefully create new networks of wiki collaborations around this matter. So um, we, we have um, a workshop, we have presentations first, and then we have the workshop part. and and um, we have the chat. So I wonder, would you be willing to, to, to talk us through that, Patricia, what we have parts, how to work? Yes, uh, well, actually, um, like you said, we, we had uh, the etherpad um, that uh, we invite you to uh, write well your names. Uh, where are you from? Uh, maybe if you are, if you participate in a Wikimedia structure, you can write them. You can write that down, and we encourage you to leave uh, any kind of questions or reflections, experiences that you want to share with us, with the presenters, and with the community. We really uh, invite you to to write all your ideas uh, there, so we can share them. Um, share them after with the presenters, Susanna. Yes, uh, since it is a little bit of a challenge uh, to discuss over this, uh, this, feed, uh, this feed and this stream, so the, in that sense we invite you to, to discuss and do the workshopping between uh, you participants and we can also chime in on the, in that um, uh, specific, yeah, this etherpad. So uh, let me see, you, you will see the questions over there and we can come back to them like closer to that. But so I'm saying, please use that time well and record your important ideas in the Ethernet. And uh, as always, we follow the universal code of conduct in this session as well. So we will first hear the presentation of Eder. Eder Porto. He is a software developer and a mathematician, and he works as products and resources manager at user group Wikimovimento Brasil. 
Welcome, Edem. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you, Patricia, and all the other uh, panelists. And if you can uh, go to the next uh, slide, please. And the other one. Yes, so my presentation, Museum of Brazil, the digital preservation after a disaster. Next one. So first, um, I want to talk about this, this slide. Um, is very, very important, the headline of it. There is a deadline. I want to introduce this notion the um, deadline in the sum of all knowledge, all human knowledge. I can't stress this uh, enough, so I made bold, italic, and underlined that, that there is a deadline. So every day, everywhere in, in the world, uh, pieces of human knowledge are lost forever due to an uh, infinite reasons that be a fire, that be a, a natural disaster that we can't uh, prevent or some things that we can prevent are, for example, uh, destruction, uh, uh, destruction of property, uh, fire, uh, floods, um, and many, many reasons. So uh, in this context of uh, knowledge being lost forever because we can't uh, uh, repair or recover these pieces of knowledge that are disappearing, um, uh, we, we, we build uh, from um, our Wikimedia movement uh, movements for the preservation of material and immaterial heritage. This is not uh, exclusive of the Wikimedia movement, but uh, the Wikimedia movement uh, wakes or uh, bore, uh, uh, acts as a movement, a, a, a central piece of uh, the future of preservation of material and material heritage. So um, we actually wrote about uh, an article about the fire of the National Museum of Brazil. And in the next slides, I will present the links. But uh, something that is said in that article that we uh, say about this, this study case is that the influential cultural and social movements will emerge from the intertwining of local contexts and digital strategies will, which will eventually lead to global impact. So we have our local contexts and our local um, uh, disasters to manage, and we have digital strategies, and we have to um, work on these digital strategies to uh, lead to a global impact uh, action. And I put a link on there on the essay on Wikipedia. There is a deadline that details this uh, notion. Next one, please. So about the, the National Museum or Museu Nacional in Portuguese, it was uh, established in 1818 um, by uh, the Imperial family and it is, it was, it is, it still exists, uh, the, the oldest educational and scientific uh, institution in Brazil. And it was created already in that time with uh, the intent of becoming educational and, sci uh, educational and scientific dissemination purposes. In 1989, it occupied the, it, starts to occupy the Passo de São Cristóvão. It is the building in the back of this image, and it's a historical building. It was the residency of the imperial family in 1889. Uh, we changed to a republic, and that became the, the, the house of the museum. In 1964, it is integrated with the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro and become uh, a university of that uh, museum of that university, and it has it had 
one of the largest collections of natural history and anthropology in the world with uh, 2 million, uh, nearly 2 million, 20 million artifacts in its collection. Next one, please. And in September tw uh, two, uh, 2018, disaster struck um, in, upon the museum and um, a massive fire destroyed the, the building uh, com completely and um, most of its collection. It's estimated 95% of the collection, but we have uh, some recovery, uh, some items uh, were recovered and uh, I don't have the statistics on that, but it was estimated 95% at the time. Um, we are talking here artifacts and uh, collection of the museum, S things like uh, um, species that were collected in the uh, uh, botanical and um, insects and other uh, animals. And we are talking also about uh, that uh, touch uh, deeply. Uh, Amy, we lost some uh, indigenous uh, recordings of languages that don't exist anymore. The people that spoke that the, those languages don't exist anymore. And in the museum were the only recordings of the, the those languages. And that uh, it's uh, a loss for the whole humanity and not only for Brazil. The cause of the fire was lack of external uh, grounding and individual circuit uh, breaker in an air conditioner in a room in the first uh, floor and that um, uh, started the fire. But the real cause of this fire and this disaster, it was the shrinking investment for public institutions and disorganization of the National Museum Agency in Brazil during uh, the years prior to 2018. And that become, uh, became a practice in the Brazilian government. And it's not exclusive for Brazil. We have this for um, this uh, structure of uh, shrinking investment for public institutions, uh, especially in the cultural sector uh, throughout the global south as a whole. And for um, this, uh, at the time of the disaster of the fire, we uh, came with a project uh, called National Museum Cross Week Project, uh, where Wikimedians from Brazil, from other places, uh, came together to um, salvage what was left of the collection of the museum that was digitized. It was uh, photographed by people going to the museum. So next slide, please. And so this project is an uh, interweek project. It's not only on Portuguese Wikipedia, but was coordinated on Portuguese Wikipedia. And we had um, a real um, work of digital preservation and dissemination of this collection because um, it's it's known and we uh, have data to, to uh, back this up. Um, all the momentum, we have to take advantage of the momentum of such um, crisis to um, act on it and uh, engage people to work on this uh, type of uh, uh, digital preservation, crowdsourcing uh, in response to these uh, type of disasters. I have some uh, references uh, of uh, about this, this project specifically, digital crowdsourcing in response to a cultural disaster uh, and was called data archaeology because we um, saved books and to uh, get photos from the general public to uh, reconstruct the museum, the rooms in the museum, in the Portuguese Wikipedia and other Wikipedias using a, a range of tools 
most of them are uh, well-known uh, tools like Quick Statements, Tabernacle, and so on. Uh, but we had used uh, other tools uh, to help us uh, coordinate and disseminate this uh, content and organize the task force for this uh, project. And uh, this also should be in bold and italic and underlined. Um, the most important part of this project is documentation, documentation, and documentation. How do we, as uh, a community, engage people to work in this type of projects? And how do we um, act on this type of strategy or other types of strategy when they happen? Because, again, there is a deadline. They will eventually happen, and we uh, need to be able to act on them. Uh, as soon as they strike. So for that, we need documentation of how how to do dissemination, how to um, gather people, which tools do we use to coordinate these, um, these uh, activities. Next one, please. So this is a, a slide about the uh, article, the academic article that uh, we wrote uh, the last year and this year. Uh, Alvis, Burley, Lima, Pio, and Peshansky, 2022. Uh, there's the link. And in this article, we made exactly these two questions. What is the optimized infrastructure for cultural movements on Wikimedia as Wikimedia uh, acts as the central and the basic infrastructure for uh, open knowledge? And how does the development of, of these processes and resources for cultural preservation and dissemination in a collaborative digital environment happen? So we answer these questions in the article and we invite you all to read it and to um, contribute to these conclusions. I think the next one, yeah. And I pass the, the, the stage for uh, the next one. Thank you. I would briefly like to, uh, here in the middle, uh, thank you, uh, Eder. And I would like to bring on the screen the illustration Linda is working on while I'm, I'm saying the next few words. In the, in the crisis and glam, page on MetaWiki, and uh, there will probably be other places where these will be uh, available for Wikimania, but refer to them there. So please also remember to add your questions in the uh, chat and record them in the Etherpad. I think it's better to write in the Etherpad. We will present the questions after the presentations. So uh, next, we would like to invite Nassima Shabun to present. Uh, she's an architect and Wikimedian from Morocco and the chair and co-founder of WikiWorld Heritage User Group. Welcome, Nassim. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, I will present a project that we um, that is uh, still ongoing in WikiWorld Heritage, which is called Windanger. Actually, Windanger's scope is to document the World Heritage sites uh, that are endangered. Uh, next slide, please. World Heritage sites are inscribed on the danger list, either because of conflicts, mismanagement, or natural disasters. And the, the aim of Wind Danger is to create wiki-based interactive content that will be appealing to different audiences in order to promote and raise awareness about these sites. Next slide, please. So the question is why we are intending to document thoroughly these sites and why we would like to create a more interactive and appealing content. The first uh, reason is to change perceptions about these sites and also these countries, because countries like Yemen, Afghanistan, um, Libya, for example, are always seen through the prism of politics and conflicts. And we would like to draw the attention to the diversity and richness of cultures in these countries. And on the other hand, we would like to contribute in helping heritage professionals 
architects, archaeologists, and reconstruction professionals in order to uh, uh, to lead uh, better reconstruction works. So we are anticipating future disasters and creating a sustainable images and videos and text repository in order to help them when they will need to gather information about sites that no longer exist. Next slide, please. So what are our, who are our audiences? First of all, we are targeting locals in these countries and we are trying to reconnect them with their cultural heritage because in times of conflict, especially of conflict, cultural heritage is no longer a priority for people and also for the different uh, governments. So many people in these countries, especially youth and people who grow within conflict, do not have any, uh, uh, do not have any knowledge about their culture and heritage, and also they are not aware of the importance of preserving the, their culture. So when they are involved in the documentation process through participating in photography campaigns, for example, or writing Wikipedia articles, they are learning more and more about this heritage and they are creating some emotional bounds with it. Then our second target audience is foreigners, is the international community in order to fight stereotypes. As I said earlier, always these countries are seen through the prism of uh, politics and conflicts. So when we are trying to change this perception, we are also fighting some stereotypes and we are pointing the common uh, things that we have uh, all over the world, which is culture and heritage, because heritage is always just a different interpretation of the same culture and values between different countries and regions. Then our third target audience is heritage professionals. And speaking from the perspective of an architect, any country, any photo that exists on commons might be very helpful and of extreme importance, especially for architects, because some photos, even if they are not in a very good quality, they can have a load of information that, um, that sometimes we don't pay attention to. For example, architectural details, the type of damage uh, for buildings, uh, it, they can give an idea about the construction technique, etc. And this image, for example, of Taki Zafar in Afghanistan that we could have, uh, that we could collect during our photography campaign, can show how a photo uh, bear a lot of information about the type of uh, construction and also of the different details in a building. Next slide, please. So now the question is how we are going to do this, how we are going to reach these different uh, audiences. Of course, everybody, uh, I believe that everybody knows Wikipedia, but are all the people all over the world aware of how Wikipedia works or how to use Wikipedia in an effective way? And the most important thing is, are they aware of the existence of the sister projects? Because Wikipedia is, uh, the most famous project, but not everybody is aware of Wikidata, for example. So what we are trying to do through WinDanger is to leverage the different possibilities and options given by Wikidata, of course, to link in it and to create synergies with the other projects like Wikipedia and Commons. And we are trying to make all this content accessible to the people who have no clue what Sparkle is, for example, and especially Prof professionals in the heritage field, they are not aware of all the, these technologic tools because they are coming from a very different background. So what we are trying to do is to simplify the access to the results of Wikidata instead of letting them learn the process from scratch. Next slide, please. And how we did this is through involving, including all the, uh, the information that exists on Wikipedia, Wikidata, and Wikimedia Commons on a new website, which is the website of WikiWorld Heritage. And we have different sections for our different projects, including WinDanger. And here, for example, you can see that we can um, preview the different timelines related to the different sites through a simple click instead of uh, building queries from scratch. So what we try to do is to uh, translate the Wikidata queries into a very simple 
search process using a search bar and including all the relevant sites. We included also maps, graphs, and different statistics that can be useful uh, for the professionals for the different sites. So if a professional in the field of heritage needs to, uh, uh, to have access to information on the different wiki projects, they will find it centralized and accessible from here, and they will not have any uh, technical aspects that can hinder them from uh, reaching the information. So you will find the different uh, types of content, like timelines, graphs, maps, statistics on uh, WikiWord Heritage website, and you are all invited to, uh, to participate in our campaigns. Uh, on the Win Danger meta page, you can find all the uh, contests and programs on the project page on meta. Thank you. Thank you, Nasima. Uh, we hope uh, all of the spectators are now in full uh, speed uh, recording your ideas and experiences and thoughts and questions in the Etherpad for discussing further. And um, I would also like to, if we have the opportunity to have a, a peek at what Linda has been drawing while we've been hearing the, the, from the Wikimedians, but we can also have a look at that later. Oh, well, here. So we'll spend a moment to, to have a look. Um, Linda does this live uh, recording uh, graphic recording and these images will be available uh, under open licenses after the event. But uh, to go fast or forward or forward, uh, we will now invite Hanna Osajuk to talk about her experiences. Hanna works as a GLAM and education program manager in Wikimedia. Ukraine and Anna will also introduce Yacheslav, a fellow Wikimedian. Um, and welcome, Hanna and Yacheslav. Yeah, thank you, Susanna. Thank you for this opportunity to share um, like our insights, uh, our view on how to preserve cultural heritage as it's seen from within the ongoing war. So what I wanted to say the most is like this crisis is still happening. That's what it this is why we have this very black and white perspective and it's sometimes is very helpful to understand where your enemy is and who are you fighting for and what are you fighting for because it gives absolutely um, amazing understanding what is worth uh, saving and what is worth fighting for we are very we deeply care about our language of our cultural heritage prominent people of the past and the present and our heroes who are fighting for our freedom t today and uh, it is uh, worth mentioning that ukraine is a pretty big country it's one of the largest european countries and we have more than a uh, 5000 museums more than 15,000 libraries all across Ukraine. And unfortunately, uh, now uh, more than half of it are not uh, functioning properly. Uh, some of them because they are occupied by Russian troops. So they are on that territories which are like occupied now or because of the threat of a constant shelling and bombing uh, by Russian aviation and artillery. So, um, it is um, an interesting perspective as a manager uh, who is responsible for, uh, for working with uh, librarians and uh, museum workers and uh, arch archivists uh, to see how it's all um, different now, how, uh, how they are uh, understanding why uh, putting their data online is important. So uh, also I want to stress uh, that the main efforts of uh, Wikimedia Ukraine since February 24th is on supporting the community uh, and our cooperation with the GLAM institutions are mostly like a common project, uh, digitalization and uh, everything like that is frozen for six months now 
mainly because uh, they can't operate under this constant threat of um, being um, shelled. Uh, next slide, please. Next one. Uh, yeah. Um, so my uh, point uh, with this slide is that uh, we uh, put a new meaning into our old uh, and uh, continuing projects like uh, Wiki Loves Monuments, for example. It now has this new perspective of war Wiki Love Monuments, uh, where we ask uh, our community to upload photos of those uh, monuments and uh, buildings and cu cultural heritage which is uh, ruined uh, basically now and uh, we can't you know just uh, repair it just yet but we can document it and uh, upload to the uh, wiki commons and describe it uh, on a wikipedia articles also a new spin uh, has uh, the edited tones which are uh initiated by Wikimedia Ukraine or our community uh, about this um, different regions in Ukraine, like Kharkiv region, which is uh, very north and under constant threat uh, and constant shelling by Russian troops, uh, the Crimea week, uh, the Chernihiv region week, the Mariupol week, uh, all of them have this very um, different uh, approach to them now. Uh, and uh, they are very much concentrating on um, uh, preserving the knowledge and uh, preserving uh, the state how it was like pre-war because we because we're in the middle of it we can't uh, already you know start to uh, work on uh, something else just yet and also main take from uh, all these weeks and projects uh, we had that uh, there will be a, a lot more interest uh, to your country, to this specific region, and a lot less people who can edit coherently. Uh, there will be vandals there. That's why that's required more patrol patrollers and administrators to review this specific topic. It is uh, important to stress because people want to see the relevant information and it's pretty uh, hard uh, to do it in time. Next slide, please. Um, with this one, I just wanted to, you know, uh, share this uh, regret we have that we didn't uh, have the, uh, you know, the best uh, practices with uh, licensing and freedom of panorama at the fullest here. Uh, world want to see Ukraine full, fully through the lens of different documentaries, photographs, and uh, they still do. But because we do not do not have, for example, freedom of panorama, these uh, images, this video can be removed from a public platforms, which is a big uh, and sad news for us. Uh, also, if we would have like the Creative Commons licensing open access in place, uh, and they would be understood and accepted by GLAM institutions at the time of the war, probably this would help uh, much more uh, to save the uh, museum, uh, different um, galleries, also like pictures. Uh, much more than a sandbags in a building windows. Uh, maybe you saw the pictures from Ukraine where uh, all the statues are uh, surrounded by sandbags and buildings have uh, sandbags in the windows. So uh, why the like bomb wave coming through, it's not uh, uh, like the insides um, can still survive. Probably if they will be digitalized and uploaded, um, that will be much more helpful than the sandbags. Um, so prioritize your advocacy efforts when you can. It is really urgent. Deadline is there. You just know when, it's come yet, when it will come yet. Next slide, please. Um, I put in this slide a few easy ways to help Ukraine. Um, so um, it is... Um, also, I think uh, some of those will be helpful to any community in a uh, crisis situation. 
because one main thing we like have understood here in Ukraine that uh, in a modern world, uh, symbolic support matters a lot. When uh, you use a correct term, when you say in Kyiv or instead of Kiev, when you say in Odessa and spelling it with one S, when you say in uh, Chernobyl uh, instead of uh, Chernobyl, uh, it really um, gives us an understanding that you um, support in the cause. So you, you even use, using a pro appropriate term is important. Voice your position, uh, wear um, clothes uh, which supporting the cause, uh, or even create a silly dances on TikTok. It's all helping, and uh, in this modern world, uh, all these symbols they are sometimes uh, even uh, like give us um, a lot of hope, and uh, that's it is important. Um, also, today, Wikimania started with a beautiful uh, video about Ukrainian culture. You can watch it via link um, on, a, on this uh, presentation. Uh, you can watch it again if you've seen it already. Uh, you can help uh, by translating an article uh, to your language. Some of the uh, examples of articles also you can access via link. And if you want to help us fight, please donate. Um, next slide. Uh, I want to introduce and invite for uh, to share his experience. Uh, my colleague Vyacheslav, he is a, a member of Wikimedia Ukraine and a librarian. Uh, I just want to stress that his city, he did not flee the city and uh, his city Kharkiv is uh, under constant shelling for six months. So um, we thought that it would be uh, a good idea to um, let him share his experience uh, to our audience. Thank you. Hello, my name is Vyacheslav Mamon. I'm a member of Wikimedia Ukraine and the librarian of the Kharkiv State Scientific Library. Our library has a good history of cooperation with Wikimedia Ukraine. We have many plans for this uh, yeah, uh, but due to the military aggression of Russia, most of them remain unreal unrealizable. I my, myself had to live and work some time in a bomb shelter in the spring. In such condition, I wrote several, several articles for Wikipedia about hockey scientists, uh, in particular Oleg Amosov and Valery Moskowitz, victims of Russian aggressions, aggression. I also digitalized and posted on Wikisource several articles from a 1918 year, scans of which I met, made before the war. Now many rare books, magazines and archival documents in library fonts are in danger of being destroyed because of the war. Well, the question of their scanning and di digitalization is one of the most important in my activity. After the end of the military aggression, I plan to acti actively engage in scanning and publishing on a wiki repository and wiki source books uh, from the library that are in the public domain. It is explained that uh, this will be a joint project with Wikimedia Ukraine. Prelimin preliminary negotiations were held in the spring of this year. I see interests in these uh, projects both from the side of Wikimedia Ukraine and from the side of li the library management. But I can cannot start the project where, while there are active military operations in the country. It's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Hanna and Vyacheslav. I um, would like to ask um, 
if the audience has already uh, asked questions, maybe Patricia, you could. Uh, we do have. We do have some oh. questions. Um, yeah, actually, we have uh, questions for Nasima and Eder um, for now. <laughs> but we, we really encourage you to uh, leave questions, comments, uh, or your own experiences or ideas uh, with uh, this topic in the Etherpad. Um, for Nasima, uh, uh, Wind Danger have uh, engaged alliances or collaborations with institutions that might help you or um, yeah help you to promote uh, this project what what kind of support or resources uh, would you need to ensure the work that you are doing in this project uh, thank you for this question um, actually uh, in wind danger each time we worked in a country we were collaborating with a local NGO so we worked with um, a Libyan organization and we uh, a Yemeni organization and once we started our collaboration with an uh, Afghan NGO uh, the uh, Kabul fell in the hands of Taliban so we lost contact with our collaborators and instead of this uh, we found many international ins institutions that were very interested in Afghanistan at the moment so we worked with WH International and how we were working with them is through enabling and building capacity for locals to lead the wiki activities themselves in their countries. So we conducted training of trainers, especially in Wikipedia, and those who received the trainings, they were able to organize editathons in the country. And we also launched online photography campaigns that were widely advertised by the NGOs. And we tried also to collect some uh, testimonials, some video testimonials from heritage professionals in these countries. So all the work was made through partnerships and collaborations. Uh, for the support, actually besides improving the content through translation, uh, through uh, donating photos, if you are from one of the countries that have endangered sites, uh, we also would like to have some more material that explains what is Wikimedia, what is the Wikimedia movement, and what is the importance of the Wiki projects. Because the biggest challenge that we faced is to raise awareness and really uh, explain what Wikimedia is and what is its importance in countries where there are no pre-existing Wikimedia communities. So we found that people are not aware of the importance of the movement. They are not familiar with the notions of open knowledge and they don't understand what, uh, what, what, uh, what help and what contribution can the open knowledge uh, have uh, to defend and preserve their heritage. Uh, and we struggled in finding material that we can use to explain what Wikimedia is. Um... We have we have another question for Eder. Um, what is tragedies or learning experience from from? I imagine that from what happened after the Rio de Janeiro Museum, have you translate into the work you do in the Wiki Movement of Brazil? Do you have a glam project to invite or engage cultural institutions to preserve to prevent? Yeah. I think uh, the the answer to this question relates what uh, with what uh, Nasima was talking about showing um, institutions, glam institutions, uh, and other cultural institutions the role of Wikimedia uh, and how they can benefit uh, from putting their archives, their collections into Wikimedia. Uh, the, the Wikimedia platforms, and we had um, adopted, uh, this is 2018, the, the fire uh, uh, occurred in 2018, and um, then we didn't have support from the Wikimedia Foundation as a user group. We became, uh, we were re-recognized as a user group in 2019, and from there, so we had to rely on our resources and the resources that we 
uh, have been developing since 2017, and especially after the fire, is uh, on this uh, approach to glam institutions on uh, showing them uh, what they can benefit from uh, working with the Wikimedia community. And since then, we have 40 GLAM partnerships. Uh, but uh, the, 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 the major uh, change and practice that we adopted is to document um, what is a GLAM partnership, what you can benefit from it, how, um, how the, the, the work that we do with disasters, for example, is, uh, is done. Uh, we don't have a GLAM partnership to engage cultural institutions to preserve uh, or to prevent. To prevent is a, a political uh, uh, approach that we work as uh, volunteers and uh, with, within governments and uh, in the political side, but uh, we don't have any uh, partnerships to preserve uh, Every GLAM partnership is to preserve, but we don't have a focus on, already on uh, the start of the GLAM partnerships. Thank you. Thank you there. We have one more question. Susanna, maybe you want to read it? Okay. Um, yes. Um, this is uh, specifically for Vyacheslav from Kharkiv. Um, the, the, the person asking is saying that um, they are an experienced wiki contributor staying in Kharkiv as well. Once you already start your activities to digitalize the materials of the scientific library, are new volunteers welcome to help with the project? Mm, not so good. In English, I'm not so understand the question. Uh, В'ячеславе, питання від користувача, який також зараз в Харкові знаходиться, і його запитання таке, коли ми, ну, коли відновиться робота зі сканування документів і загалом, чи ви будете приймати волонтерів, чи будете обмежуватись власними силами? Давай, можна я тоді на українському відповідаю? Так. так. Ну, якби Сканування неможливо, поки не працює бібліотека. Бібліотека зараз не відкрита. Ну, туди навіть робітники не ходять, і ми не, ну, ми не можемо в ній, в ній працювати. Як тільки це буде, ми отримаємо сканер від Вікімедіа Україна, як вони нам обіцяли у користування, і ми продовжимо. В принципі, Можна і, і просто і фото, фо, ну, на фотоапарат фотографувати, як я це робив. Це також можна продовжувати. Ну, допомога завжди можлива. Ну, ми з радістю її приймемо, бо це потрібно не просто сфотографувати, їх ну, потрібно ще оцифрувати та вичитати. Тому якщо хтось хоче, ну, хай пише до мене або на Вікіпедію, або в Фейсбук, або пише у е, відділ е, ну, в бібліотеці наш, або просто в бібліотеку, ми пояснимо, як з цим працювати. Ну, з цим можна скоординувати, але це в кращому випадку буде осінню, а можливо, коли війна закінчиться. Зараз я не можу це сказати. Чи ви можете залишити контактний, ну, тобто, можливо, імейл власний чи бібліотеки, для, на які можна писати з темою листа про волонтерство зі сканування? Так, так, я можу зараз написати, так. Uh, okay. So the answer is, uh, of course, as soon as library opens its doors again for visitors and readers, uh, the any uh, volunteer help will be welcome. Uh, they hope to bring the uh, professional scanner, like the uh, apparatus, to the library, uh, which will be funded by Wikimedia Ukraine. But even if that doesn't happen, it still can be done by photo, uh, like by a camera, digital camera. 
the thing is, it's not only the photographing and scanning, it's also a proofreading and uh, a lot of uh, work like that. So uh, Vyacheslav will uh, text us um, emails or contact numbers which can be contacted to help with this work. And uh, by his very optimistic prognosis, it can start at autumn or after the actual, you know, the Ukraine uh, win in this war. So that's a victory in this war. Uh, so uh, I think on uh, our session page in Meta, uh, there will be a like, little note with uh, how to contact Vyacheslav and help uh, with uh, this digitalizing of uh, the library uh, document. Thank you, everyone. I think um, we are like just suitably over time. Uh, and uh, what I urge everyone to do is to join the conversation and continue the conversation. Well, uh, not only conversation. I think the, uh, the, the idea is to do things. And this is what Wikimedia uh, volunteers and networks generally do. They like roll their sleeves and do things. And so, so we'll just have to find the ways in which we can do uh, roll our sleeves in these matters. So uh, our proposal is that we would uh, set up a Telegram group, and for that uh, we invite you to to write your Telegram handles in the Etherpad. Uh, but there will probably be different kinds of discussions. But I hope that this is not the end of this this discussion, but it's just like a start or a boost for for bringing these further. Um, any, any other last words? I would uh, just invite everyone to say just a little something. Well, if I can start, Susanna, thank you so much again mm -hmm. for uh, creating this opportunity to connecting all of us from so many different places to share this um, concern that we have and what a wonderful and urgent task are you all doing in your different territories uh, thank you so much for doing this and i really hope that we can continue uh, creating these collaborations right to learn from each other and to um, help us as well in in the ways we can just like hannah said everything uh it's a contribution so everything we might do is a contribution so thank you Anyone, you may pick the pick up the mic. Yeah, I can jump in, and um, I just wanted to say and to emphasize that um, all these these presentations that you saw here and all the um, topics that we uh, approached are um, within the, the, the this notion, and I, I just wanted to emphasize again the notion that there is a deadline and we can as a, a collaborative movement uh, and uh, cultural and uh, collaborative intelligence work to preserve and to uh, work with uh, what we have left of the uh, sum of our knowledge and contribute to, to the sum of our knowledge. And that is our mission as Wikimedians. Hannah and Massimo, which one will be quicker? I would just like to thank you for this opportunity uh, to talk. And I am looking forward to seeing a big resolution which was drawn during uh, our session because it looks so colorful and interesting. But I can uh, see only like a little uh, part of it. So um, it is uh, really important for us that you uh, invite us um, to speak about our experience. I hope next year we could, you know, we will be able to tell more about how we rebuild everything and, uh, you know, uh, our cultural heritage is saved and sound and it's not under a constant threat anymore. Uh, but for now, it is uh, extremely important to, you know, be a part of a conversation and be uh, something who 
is who, whose, whose voice is heard, uh, it is um, very uh, important for us. Thank you. Nasima, I wonder if you are, are capable of uh, speaking. Maybe not. Nasima has uh, had to leave for another session. So I, I, I also also thank again and thank Linda, whose uh, drawing is up on the on the screen, and uh, wish you all um, a wonderful Wikimania. And we will be seeing these results in the project page, uh, in Crisis and Glam on Meta, and around the web. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think we are saying bye for today. Thank you. Bye. Ciao. Thank bye. you. Bye.